Are the kids in your dollhouse looking for the perfect Father's Day gift for the dollhouse dad? How about a toolbox? Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is to make. Alright, I'm going to try and keep this project really basic. I will admit that I am kind of making it up as I go today because I got this idea last night in the middle of the night and changed my entire mind about what I was doing for a project this week. I realized that next Sunday is Father's Day, at least here in the U.S. And I thought we very seldom make projects for the guys that live in our dollhouses. So we're going to make Dad, the dad in the dollhouse, a toolbox. So we're starting out with basic supplies. We need some regular craft sticks, some thick jumbo craft sticks, a toothpick, glue, something to cut your wood with, and a way to make a hole or a couple of holes. I've made one in this end. I've marked for this one. Now normally I would use my little, I think it's called a pin vise. You put the little drill bit into and you use that to twist. I've got three of them. I can't find any of them this morning. So I've got my small drill bit. This is its a little bit bigger than a toothpick. It's probably about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm not sure. And it is possible to do this by hand. I did the other one. I'm going to do this one. Just twist it. These small ones you can actually do by hand without anything to hold it. It's easier if you have the little pin vise. I would not use an electric drill on something this small. It's, I mean, you can do it, obviously, but it's, quite frankly, I'm more apt to split the wood that way, it seems like. And you'll notice I haven't cut my, my uh, craft stick down before drilling the holes. I always drill the holes first if I can. It's easier to get them centered. It's easier to hold onto them before they're cut. But yes, if you want to use a drill, feel free, or a Dremel, anything like that. I just didn't feel like getting out tools today. Since I couldn't find the other the piece I wanted, I'm just making it up. Always put something under when you're making a hole in your wood like this. Um, there we go. I've got an old phone book that I have on hand just for that. All right, so now this is trimmed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut two pieces that are one and a half inches. So first let's cut the, make a flat end to work with. And you'll notice that a lot of craft sticks are not very flat. That one's flatter. Alright. I want to make this about one and a half inches long. So that's, I'm going to make this one and a half. That will make our toolbox just over one and a half inches, which will translate to about 18 inches or a little more. This will be a nice big toolbox for Dad. I've marked both of my cuts. I can even them up when I get it glued together. This tool I'm using to cut with is called an Easy Cutter. I always get questions when I use it. I love it for cutting wood. We're not going to cut our other pieces yet because, quite frankly, I find it easier to not lose them if they're not cut. So we've got our two pieces of wood. We're going to glue these together and let these dry. I'm trying out a new glue today. It's called Elmer's Craft Bond Quick Dry Glue. I just opened it up this morning. I bought it a couple of weeks ago at the, actually in the paint department of my regular store I shop at. It's quite thick. Um, I've not used it before, so. Now, even though I am going to clamp, I'm still going to put a little bit of super glue in there. Probably three drops. And super glue today is a Loctite gel. Now, be sure you don't get your fingers in that glue mixture. Get this all 
great and level. I'm going to wipe it. I have parchment paper here on my table, by the way. That's what this is that I'm working on. All right. And I'm actually going to use just some binder clips that I get at the dollar store. And I can feel that I've got super glue on my fingers, so I've got to be careful what I touch until I get that cleaned off. So we are going to let this glue set. And when this is set, I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. All right, so this has sat for a little more than five minutes, and it seems to be pretty well set up. So let's mark this. I'm going to mark one inch down from each end. Because I want to make our little toolbox about a foot tall. Let's see. Whoops. Oopsie. Get the light cover on my lights. I'm out in my dining room. I'm not in my normal workspace because I'm doing other things on that table right now. All right. Now. So this is set up. It's pretty even. I think it'll be fine. Let's get some, let's get our glue out. I'm actually going to put some glue out on my paper. Whoops, I did not want that much, but whatever. This is a little on the crooked side, so let's see if I've got a file. This is just a nail file. going to use the two glues. I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to dip into here because I want to make sure that that is in the right spot. And then I'm going to hold it together. And I'm going to hold this for a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to do the other end exactly the same way, and I'll let this glue dry. And when this glue is dry, I'll come back, and we'll get a look at how this looks. All right, my glue has had a little bit of time to set up. I want to do this next step before that's completely dry, so that if I need to adjust anything, I can. So for the sides, I'm using these uh, jumbo craft sticks. I'm going to measure this just a little bit more than one and three fourths, probably about one and seven eighths, because I can um, sand it off once the glue is completely dry if I need to. Also, I'm not worried about the pencil lines. And let's see if I can. I should have brought an extra toothpick, but I didn't, so. This is, this is just a scrap of our um, original pot, jump up, our original regular craft stick. Super glue. And 
I would rather have some to sand off than to be short. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. It's not a lot to sand off, and the, the craft stick is pretty soft, so it sands off pretty easily. Super glue is almost dry, almost empty, I think. It's also drying out on the tip. There. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm, my throat has been uh, being kind of weird today. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and run this through. Hopefully, I've got those holes lined up pretty well. Come on. There we go. Let's see. Let's get some glue on the end of that. Ah, did not want to get it all the way down on the handle. wipe off any extra. I'm not exactly sure where this is going to... I think I've got super glue on something there. There we go. And we'll trim that off when it dries. So we're going to leave this to dry. And when it gets all dry, we'll come back, we'll trim it up, we'll put a coat of paint on it, and it will be finished. All right, now hopefully my glue is set up enough that I won't knock this apart. I'm just using an emery board and just kind of filing that off. This side, the side got on a little too low, so it's gonna sit crooked. When you're doing it, set it on someplace where it will stay right and then sand it. When you're assembling yours, you don't have to do it where the camera can see what you're doing. So, well, I'm going to continue sanding until I have these ends even and get this sanded off level. When that's done, oh, I'm also going to clip that. I have a pair toenail clippers. I just dropped something on the floor. Let's trim this with this. There. Perfect. Don't use scissors on toothpicks. It can be very dangerous and cover when you do it with that. All right. I'm going to finish sanding off until everything is smooth and even. And when that happens, I'll be back and we'll paint this. All right. So we are sanded fairly smooth. Um, in the interest of getting the video done on schedule, I'm not quite as sanded as I would like to be, but you can take your time when you're doing yours. So I'm going to paint mine. You don't have to paint it. You could leave it unpainted. I did notice that Home Depot has little toolboxes, little wooden tool caddies on their website that are unfinished. But I thought, when I was kind of envisioning this, I was envisioning a paint has not been used for a long time. Kind of a worn toolbox that's this color. And this color happens to be Avalon Blue from Ceramicoat. And I have no idea how long I've had this paint. So I have no idea if they still have that color. Now we're going to get kind of messy here. So what I'm going to do, and I did make a boo-boo when I was trying to get this trimmed off. I kind of chipped it, but that's okay, because I want to kind of paint and then rub. 
This would be cool even to use some crackle finish, if you have some crackle finish handy. Put that on first in a really thin coat. Yeah, my jumbo craft stick kind of warped there. They do that sometimes. Now be really careful doing anything with that toothpick. That is going to be really fragile. In fact, I don't think I'm going to wipe it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of not really do much of a job of painting it. And I'm not going to paint the inside really. I'll leave the inside just the way it is. Just paint the rim and down on the ends a little bit. I might go back later and paint it. I'll see. This is kind of fragile because it's very thin, very cheap wood, but and there. Now, the dude that lives in your dollhouse now has a toolbox. Get that done. There. So that's how simple it is. I would even put a finish on this because I don't want it to look really finished and fancy. You can do whatever kind of finish you want on yours. You could paint it all with a really nice coat and put a gloss on it. You can leave it natural. You could just kind of bang it up and make it look dirty as far as that goes. It's up to you. What's the story on your toolbox? So that's our project for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be sure and check the blog post. I'll put some pictures on there of uh, kind of this in action maybe. I'll see what I can do. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.